I'm going to keep my remarks very brief, but there are a couple of things I would like to say to put this all into perspective. Um, the first thing is that I have known all of these speakers before and heard them all before except for one who I was glad to meet, and they all had new things to say. And furthermore, I'm looking forward to seeing the videos of this on the web so I can actually follow up some of the references and all the rest. Um, it's really been a grand day that's been possible for us. Next point is that what you've heard today is but a very small fraction of what evolutionary medicine is already. There are all kinds of people who could have told you how you can use phylogenetic methods for tracing the origins of a bacteria from one continent to another. There are people who could have told you about using developmental evolutionary approaches to all kinds. You've heard a small fraction of the field. It happens to be the fraction I'm most interested in, but other people could give you very different perspectives on it. Third is that this field is just getting started. I think that's clear from today, right? Uh, don't imagine that what you heard today is anything like a mature field. We are just barely getting started. You've heard many of the world's leaders today. And I think this also means it's also clear that there, what happens right now is going to determine the future of the field. And I remain concerned that some people are going to take it and try to apply it prematurely without evidence and ruin it all and make give it a bad reputation. I feel that less after today, actually, um, but that's something we really need to be concerned about. Um, I'm very eager to see what other ideas people are going to come up with. And again, one person at this point in history can do grand things in changing the direction of the field. And I think already June gets some credit for that, um, for pulling us together in a way that's never been done before. I'm going to conclude by asking both David and June to make their own wrap-up statements, so, because I know they'll both have other things to say, but it's just remarkable to me how one person, and, and David, you too, um, coming, bringing us all together, a lot of this can still be done, and many of you also will take your different directions and come up with ideas about what you can do, literally changing the future of the history of medicine. You know, this is the time that we have a chance to do that. It's not funny, actually. We can really do it. Um, <laughs> I told at the very beginning, cross we're doing a cross-cultural experiment. I think it's worked out relatively well. I talked about the cultures of medicine and evolutionary biology, but of course there's a third culture here, and that's the venture capitalists, entrepreneurs, and valley visionaries in general. I'm so glad you came. Uh, a lot of the questions that you all asked and comments were very perceptive and, and useful, and I think this is something we should do more of because there's a lot of you know, brilliant people and ideas that aren't being connected with the academic community, and we could all benefit a lot from that. So with that brief thanks, first of all, thanks to the audience, and especially to those of you who are not academics who have joined you. It's been great to have you here, and I look forward to talking more over cocktails and dinner. To the speakers, I hope you all realize they've come here voluntarily and, and generously without any compensation. It's wonderful that people are willing to do that kind of thing. Uh, evolution really does shape genuine altruism in certain circumstances. Um, to make this all really possible, though, the person is Davey. You've got to stand up. I don't, don't sit down either. Um, I, I've run lots of meetings, but rarely has there been one that's such a, such a pleasure to work with someone to organize it and make it work well. David, do you want to introduce any other members of your staff who have helped so much to make this possible? They've all snuck out? But nothing like this happens without people who can actually make things happen. Uh, we're so grateful for that. And with, it, with that, I'd like to turn it over to David and June to make final comments. David, what do you think? So I only need a couple of minutes. Uh, what we've seen today is a single set of conceptual tools that has been applied to a amazing range of phenomenon just in the uh, area of health. Andy said that it could be applied to even more phenomenon within the range of health, and it's the same toolkit that is used for uh, the study of um, non-human species, as many of us did early in our careers, and the same toolkit that can be used to study other aspects of the human phenomenon, for example, religion, something that I've studied for decades. And do you know that the same toolkit has become the framework of choice for the study of religion as a human uh, construction? And it's the same toolkit that Darwin started to use productively 
And although he was a great man as a person, I think the reason that he that he could uh, did what he did was was this toolkit that he stumbled upon. And the reason I emphasize this is that we've heard uh, numerous times that, of course, the science ultimately ends up being hard work. We don't want to be too easy with our speculations. There are lots of evolutionary hypotheses turn out to be wrong. That's the, the case with, with science in general. But there's something about this perspective which begins working right away, even at its provisional stage. It is kind of orienting, giving you a set of perceptual tools to see the world in a, in a, in a way which, which raises possibilities that were, did not exist uh, before. And those of us who have had success teaching evolution, uh, Eugenie Scott, I think she had to, she had to uh, leave. But when you teach evolution in a way that you can actually see what a powerful lens it is, then it's like walking through a door. And for those people who walk through a door, they never want to come back, basically. So I hope that this day has helped some of you, if you have not already walked through that door, at least uh, walk through it, or at least to see it, and, uh, and in which case, then uh, that dialogue will continue for, uh, for um, all of us in June. I mean, yeah. Thanks, David. And I'd just like to thank all of you for coming, for your insights, your questions, your energy, and your interest. Uh, I hope being here has perhaps changed the way you think and perhaps change the way you will do things going forward. Uh, one last thing I want you to think about is if you're interested in learning more, we'll curate a set of resources, whether it's videos, books, articles to read. Uh, please email Daviani. I think all of you have been in email touch with her. We'll put something together to, uh, for all of you to be reading about and thinking about on a go-forward basis. Yeah.